Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today it is episode number 49 and it is uh, June, Friday, June 3rd. So welcome to uh, this channel. I can see that I've got a lot of new followers and I'm thinking it's because the Selma from Little Big Knits has been talking about me in her podcast. So thank you Selma for that. And to all of those of you who are new here to the channel, uh, welcome. I'm so happy that you found uh, your way here. I think today I will actually just spend a few seconds just introducing myself to those of you who don't know who I am. Um, my name is Camilla. I am a Danish knitwear designer and yarn dyer. <laughs> I uh, live here in Denmark, which is a small country in Scandinavia, and I live here in our house with my husband and our two teenage daughters. They are soon to be 19 and 16, so they don't need me as much as they did just a few years back. So that gives me a lot of extra time to just be knitting and designing and dyeing some yarn. We also have a very sweet, huge golden retriever named Teddy. He's laying right here beside me. I will see if I can get some footage of him to put in later in the episode so you can say hello. And yes, even though it is supposed to be summer, Denmark is pretty unpredictable when it comes to the summer weather. So uh, we did actually have some really summery days in May, but today it's cold and I'm actually wearing a little knitwear because uh, yeah, my husband uh, thought that it would be warm enough and safe for us to turn off the the heat in the floors. We have like heated floors and that's how we keep the house warm. <laughs> he turned those off um, thinking that that would be fine. And then he went to Houston for some business meetings. <laughs> and uh, Of course, in Houston right now, it's really, really hot. And I just talked to him the other day said, did you turn off the whole floor heating here in the house? Because it's freezing. He's like, yes, but it's June. <laughs> yes, but it's cold. But hopefully we'll get some real nice weather soon. And uh, if not, we'll just go somewhere during the summer break. Uh, usually it's just always a safe place to go to the southern part of Europe and enjoy the summer there. That was a long intro, so uh, welcome. I have made myself a cup of coffee and I hope you have something nice to drink as well. Yes, yeah, so as I said, my name is Camilla and um, I do work as a knitwear designer and recently I started to dye yarn. In October of last year, I tried it for the first time and it's um, it has kind of consumed me. That happens when I get really interested in something. I will lose track of place and time and just go all in. And that's what happened when yarn, with yarn dyeing as well. So uh, who knows where that adventure will take me. Hopefully I will be dying lots of more yarn. Uh, I also work as a teacher. I teach, uh, I will usually uh, get a new class when they are seventh graders. So they will be around 13. And then I will have them doing seventh grade, eighth grade and ninth grade. And then they graduate kind of what you call it, what will something like junior high school and then they go to high school <laughs> um, for 10th 11th and 12th grade so here in Denmark it's a little bit different compared to the US and obviously maybe also different to other parts of Europe and somewhere else but yeah so I teach them from 13 to 15 16 years old it's a really fun age group <laughs> they teach me so much and they keep me up to date with the, how to make TikToks and reels and all these uh, new things. So that's really good for me to keep me uh, young and fresh. <laughs> uh, maybe not fresh, but they definitely keep me on my toes. That's for sure. And I, I really enjoy hanging out with this uh, age group. Um, that kind of brings me to the story about this little dinosaur that I'll just give you briefly because I only, I think, told this once before here in the podcast. And maybe some of you are just wondering why this dinosaur is kind of living different places uh, on screen always. My last group of students, I had actually been their teacher for six years, a little more actually. And parting with them just totally broke my heart. Um, they were the first kids that I ever taught. And when they graduated, the all the boys gave me this with a little saying on the back. And uh, this has always lived in the classroom. I didn't know, but they had had this secretly on the blackboard somewhere between layers of uh, maps and stuff 
stuff and um, they gave this one to me on the last day and said you have to keep this safe and this will always remind you uh, of us and I told them that they could always they would know for sure always that I was would always think of them and miss them and that is why I always keep this little dinosaur hidden somewhere uh, for you to find <laughs> maybe more for my uh, uh, former students to find but um, yeah I think it's fun to kind of put that different places every time so if you spot the dinosaur you can definitely comment down below i know some have written me written me before we couldn't find the dinosaur in the last episode where was it and maybe sometimes i'll just put it in between some of the yarns and yeah so that's the story about the dinosaur which is really not that knitting related at all okay so Let's start. I usually tell you a little bit what's uh, finished objects I have, what's on my needles, uh, upcoming designs or ideas, and also something about the yarn that's in the dye pods to have some new yarns to show, and also a little bit about life itself and future plans for the Chemist Unit Headquarter <laughs> Incorporated company. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I have one finished object. One finished object. I actually thought I would have two. And I knitted like crazy last night and then I thought, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be complete for the podcast, but I did finish. And it's a good thing that I did because it is my mom's birthday tomorrow. I'm going to visit her and celebrate her birthday. And this is uh, her birthday present. I will buy her something as well. <laughs> it's not her only present, but I did knit her up these socks. Uh, in yarn that she herself has actually dyed. Uh, my mom is a, is a hilarious woman. She's not a creative person at all. She used to be a teacher as well and she taught physics and math and she's just a very um, science type of person and I'm so much more of a history, uh, religion. <laughs> I, I actually have a master's degree in um, history of religion and history. So I am not a science person at all, but my mom is, and uh, and she's not creative at all, but the last time she was here, I invited her to the dye studio. It sounds fancy, it's really not, um, to try to dye some yarn, and uh, she was really good at it. And she made this, and she named this uh, uh, colorway the shrimp cocktail, because uh, this is has kind of a shrimpy, uh, color and uh, she thought this looks like avocado so yeah shrimps and avocado let us kind of um, shrimpy cocktail so that's what she named it and I only have three skeins or three sets of these uh, one I have knit for her socks for her and one set I have kept for myself and it is right here Uh, oops <laughs> one set is right here and the last one i actually gifted to a friend of mine so she could knit herself a pair of socks in my mom's yarn and um i thought that was it because i wouldn't sell yarn that my mom died it was just way too precious for me to sell but i have had a lot of um people asking could you dye some more because the colorway is just gorgeous so yes of course i will be dying more of these shrimp cocktail suck sets. As soon as I get this dye ordered, and I'm not gonna order just one dye, I'm just gonna wait until I have more uh, dyes on my list that I need to uh, restock. So maybe during the fall, I will be making more of these shrimp cocktail suck sets. And the pattern I use is just my own, um, I call it this, sugar socks <laughs> and this is the plain vanilla sock um, with an afterthought heel it's my go-to sock pattern because it's just so easy I don't have to do the heel uh, halfway I can just have this in the bag in the car wherever I go I can just knit 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 because you do like uh, 130 rounds <laughs> of plain uh, stacking net before you have to do the heel and the toe so easy peasy I love to have something easy like that uh, always available for me where I go somewhere or if I'm in a meeting or in the car 
so yes finished object number one and i thought and hoped that i would have finished object number two but i don't it's another pair of socks i was just so eager to try out my new bfl sock base i just got that um in the shop recently and i have heard so many good things about bfl sock yarn i don't think i've ever knit anything in it myself before um but i haven't worn these socks yet so i don't know anything about if they are i have not experienced myself if they are more durable than um the 8020 merino sock but that's what i hear and that's what i read when i read about the uh wool fibers in the blue face lacer yarn that the fibers are a little bit longer and that's why they're sturdier so this is sock number one in my bfl sock yarn and i just did a i haven't washed these so uh, I just put them on a sock blogger and the other one is uh, still in progress. As you can see, I just started to do the toe and then later today I'll do the heel. So I will finish this other sock today and they will be ready. Um, but once I wash them, they will give a little bit more and they will fit the sock blocker a little differently. And also this four by one ribbing will look a little better once I wash it. But um, I just wanted to show you. Uh, the BFL yarn and it's sad that you can't touch the yarn through the screen because uh, uh, even though it's a little bit more rustic than the merino I really truly love this um, BFL sock yarn so I'm also thinking for um, sweaters and anything else that you would use the a normal 8020 merino nylon sock yarn for I would use the BFL for um, also because if I think I have not tried that yet, but I think for sweaters it'll be a little bit more um, good for structure, like cables and stuff, because I think it'll just be a little bit more firm. Is that the right word? Or a little bit more um, strong? <laughs> I don't know the exact word how to explain, but not as um, soft or drapey maybe as the merino i think this is a little bit more because it's a little bit more um rustic yarn not scratchy at all or itchy or for me it's next to skin soft but then again i just love wool and all and the color i am knitting this in is the mint and mustard let me just grab one skein it is this colorway one of my own personal favorite colorways. I just love how that minty senap, senap, that's the Danish word, the mint and mustard, I think they just go together so beautifully. Um, if you are curious about all the colors I have in the BFL sock base, just go back and watch episode number 48 because I kind of introduce all the colors that I have. I will put up a little link up here or there, there, I think there <laughs> is always, you have to mirror what it looks like on YouTube and I always forget. I will say here, but I think it's actually up there. Anywho, this is the BFL sock base and it's, uh, yeah, it just feels so good. So two pair of socks uh, and uh, second pair will be done today. So I will be casting on another pair of socks because I always have a pair of socks on my needles and actually I'm thinking to do a DK weight um, sock because I want to try to have two mini skeins and do contrasting cuff toe and heel, but have them in two different colors instead of one. And also that gives me a little bit more yarn to do the leg of the DK of the sock, because the DK weight yarn obviously doesn't have as many yardage, much yardage as fingering weight <laughs> sock yarn. And I would love to make a pair of DK weight socks just using one skein and then Having a couple of minis is just perfect for giving that a little extra yardage and having a little fun with stripes or contrasting heel, toe and heel, toe and cuff. We will see. Uh, the reason why I'm looking over here is because all my DK weight minis are over there and I have some that are really cute and I'm just thinking, hmm, I have a navy blue... Uh, DK weight sock yarn already caked up because I caked up the wrong one for a customer <laughs> and uh, so maybe I should use that and I'm just looking at let me show you 
yeah so i have this uh dark blue uh dk weight sock yarn it is my dk i think i just i just call it dk sock on my website and this is the colorway new which is a nordic uh sea god so that is why i have named it new it's a really deep um blue i love this color blue some people think it's purple i don't think it's purple at all for me this is true true blue true blue baby i love you and i have these minis in uh three different colors so maybe i should pick out two i like the yellow maybe the yellow and the blue maybe the whew, maybe the yellow and the blue that looks really cute definitely go for the yellow and the blue and yeah that's a good idea actually i didn't even think about that today <laughs> I will be caking up these minis and I will bring them with me this weekend when I'm going, going to my mom's birthday because uh, the other project that I'm working on is really not good for a conversation because I am turning this into a pattern while I'm knitting and working on this. So I will be knitting a row and then I'll be making notes and then knitting another row and making notes and sometimes just ripping back and starting over. So that is really not a good project to uh, have on the road. But let me show you. First, I can show you the yarn. This is my new love. <laughs> I fell in love with this. I have seen this yarn uh, before, many years ago. But I, it didn't really speak to me at the time. But it really did this time. I have ordered it uh, because my friend has the local yarn store. And she would like to have some in his store. And I was like, sure, I can buy some for you. And then I thought, I it's just so fluffy and lovely and smooth and i love this color i call this peach nothing fancy fancy just peach it's a mega mohair in this in my shop i just call it mega mohair it is a let me see if i remember uh it's i don't remember i have to check a skein with a label hold on Okay, here we have it. All lovely in a skein. Yarn just looks so good when it's all twisted like this. I love that. So this is the Mega Mohair. It's 78% um, Kit Mohair. And it's 13% uh, Merino and 9% Nylon. So it's a lovely combo of good quality yarn and a little bit of nylon for strength. And I am knitting in this in this peach color i want to eat it because it looks so gorgeous okay let me show you the project maybe some of you saw this on instagram if you follow me on instagram i'm also camera on it on instagram i'm actually camera on it anywhere on social media <laughs> revelry my website is just camera but all those links and all that info is just down below so you don't have to uh, memorize anything this is how far I have gotten on this project. It's going to be a cardigan. And that's a little hard to actually show. Um, I just did a bind off for sleeve. So I'm working on this right side of the front of the cardi. And I'm right now debating if I should do um, a lot of increases or if I just should let it uh, go straight up and then have the sleeves kind of over the shoulders kind of construction. Um, actually, sometimes it's just easier to explain it this way um, instead of doing a lot of increases in a lace pattern for some people that's really hard. And I want to keep this simple so that's a beginner friendly pattern because uh, when you knit on big needles like this, it's just so good for a beginner knitter to actually see that you get somewhere. Um, just a few rows and you have made a lot of progress. So I want to keep the pattern as simple as possible and not have a lace pattern with a lot of difficult increases so i'm debating a little bit on that maybe I, maybe i'll just do do uh two versions not right now but eventually we will see i love knitting on this i love the color i love everything about it um i just need to decide which way to go with this so i can 
um, continue. And then I will have to name it. I have a sweater and a vest in this same um, diamond pattern. Actually, I have three. <laughs> I have one in just one strand of silk mohair uh, laced weight. It's just called Diamonds. I can put a picture up here for you to see. It's just a really gorgeous uh, knit that uh, demands some, some amount of patience, I must admit, but the result is lovely. Then I did a version called Spring Diamond Sweater and Spring Diamond Vest using two strands of silk mohair. And uh, they turned out really good. And then the cardigan that I'm wearing now is called the Candy Cloud Cardigan. It is knit with four strands of silk mohair. And I just took all my scraps, put them in a basket. And then I just took, I think I have white as a continuous color. I have knit with one strand of white mohair throughout the entire work. And then the three other strands, this is whatever was in my basket. And I didn't weave in ends, I would just overlap like is that four, maybe eight inches or so, 20 centimeters of overlapping, and then just continue knitting. And yeah, I just, of course you can see I use mostly pastels and soft colors. And then I thought, well, four strands of mohair is the same uh, as one strand of mega mohair. And I love this cardigan, I wear it all the time. And, and as you can see, all the buttonholes have been worn out and soon i will be um i will have a hole here where my elbow is because i wear this a lot and uh, right now it's over black and i actually do not prefer it over a black t-shirt but um it's really cute on like summery dresses and white t-shirts and stuff anyway anywho, i thought well a diamond sweater in one strand two strands maybe it's time we do it in four strands and for the impatient knitter or the beginner this is just perfect so it's here but I need a name and I know that really huge diamonds are called rocks. So maybe it should be something like a diamond rock cardigan or so far when I talk about it, I just call it the mega diamond cardigan, I think. <laughs> uh, so if you have a good idea for something diamond, but also at the same time telling that it's a big diamond, like a the huge diamond cardigan or mega the mega diamond cardigan i actually like that name because it's referring to both the yarn and it being a big diamond but i am willing willing <laughs> to listen if you have any other good suggestions okay let me put this fluffy um <laughs> cardi back in its knitting i have a little project bag uh, this is my own line of project bags and uh, I make these in a collaboration with my aunt and we call these bags by hire. I think actually they will change name back to Chemogenet just to have it all under one name. It's easier that way. Uh, it's a little hard to put a cloud in a bag because it's very fluffy. Okay, let's set this aside. And then I thought, well, okay, so the mega diamond cardigan or whatever the name is going to be, I have to dye up some of this mega mohair in different colors that will be good for this uh, design. And I decided on a very lovely, soft, pale baby blue. I call this uh, Baby Is That Your Name uh, from the movie Dirty Dancing because uh, she's wearing a baby blue cardigan in that movie and I just thought that was cute. And yeah, so one baby blue, one peach, and I have one more color and I'll just go grab it. It's uh, drying in my bathroom. <laughs> Hold on one second. I just dyed this yesterday, a very light, gray like a platinum platinum is that a word but you know a very soft gray i think everyone just loves gray and it'll go with anything and so for now i have these three colors i also have some in the shop that are speckled 
uh, from when I was experimenting and I think they'll be great for whatever but I think for the diamond the mega diamond cardigan I think a solid color works the best because of the diamond lace pattern it gets in my opinion anyway if you combine lace and speckled yarn it sometimes it gets a little um not crazy but it's hard to see the beauty of the lace pattern because the speckled yarn kind of confuses that image you can do whatever you want of course uh these are the three colors so far i'm thinking about doing a mustard um because i just love the combination of soft summer dresses with mustard so i'm thinking mustard and uh, maybe a mint yeah if you have any other idea uh on what you would like <laughs> on this mega mohair let me know and also if you know that no i want it in like bright yellow or um if you know any of my colors and you know you want that exact color so if for instance you like the colorway new you can totally <laughs> make a mohair mohair all over uh, you can write me and say i would like six skeins of mega mohair in new and i will be happy to dye that for you uh, because you can wait forever for your favorite color to be online and maybe it will never be online but if i know that's what you want i will be more than happy to dye it for you it's uh, i dye yarn all the time anyway and uh, it's not harder to dye something that you want uh, than just dyeing the colors that i think you want so if that makes sense so please just let me know if you have any special wishes that goes for all of my bases or if anything is sold out you can always email me and say I really, really want that colorway and you're sold out. Then I can prioritize that colorway and just uh, get that get that online for you. Now we have mohair uh, everywhere. It, they kind of do that in the beginning. And then once you have completed your um, project and washed it and whatever, it will stop. Eventually it will stop. Okay, let me check my list. Uh, yeah, it actually, um, I also have another project on my needles. It's the melancholy sweater. And um, I think I'll just skip that for today because I actually only did a few rows. Um, it's my turtleneck sweater. I will do that. I'll talk about that next time if I did any progress. Um, so upcoming ideas. I always have new uh, design ideas. And... Um, I have more ideas than I have time. I really, um, I'm really thinking that this, this summer I will kind of lock the door to the dye studio and try to focus on designs because I have so many ideas, but I have not had any time to kind of write the patterns or knit anything. So I will be doing that this summer. Uh, but since I have started to knit in this mega mohair and I really love it, I will be doing a shawl in this and I will be doing a diamond lace shawl. Um, I have in the Giselle shawl, I have the same diamond pattern, but that's in one strand of silk more hair. So of course there's a lot of stitches. So I'm thinking in this on a eight millimeter needle, which is a US, I don't know a lot. Um, it'll be a project that will take no time. And sometimes that's just a lot of fun to do something that's fast. And uh, also if you want to just practice lace and you don't want to spend four years <laughs> knitting a um, lace weight, lace pattern sweater, uh, this could be the, the a great way to start because it's fast and uh, you get somewhere really fast and you can see the progress and you can see how the lace pattern is kind of pops every time you do one row you can see the progress so i think it's i think it's really fun actually sometimes to work on these bigger needles because uh you can actually see from every row from every row that you got somewhere so that's uh that's the next thing and also i kind of promised someone that i will do the esther sweater in children's size uh this is the esther sweater 
it's uh right now i it's at my tech editor she is doing the second uh, look at this uh pattern she just wrote me the other day and it was there were so many red you know like a teacher grading papers it's like red 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 and it's because she is amazing so she sees everything every little tiny thing that's wrong she will she will see it so and that's just feels so good for uh, me so when i release a pattern and i know she has been through the entire process of it and uh, she will find anything she's like a detective so but yes at some point i will be doing this in um children's size i just really need a break from cables right now <laughs> cables are not my favorite thing to knit um i think actually just garter stitch is my favorite thing to knit um yeah so the last thing from the yarn i want to show you is some new minis that i did i love mini skeins and i have a variety of all the mini skeins in this little uh basket here and i have just done different combinations of three skein sets that i really like and i have as you can see behind here a lot of minis in stock so uh, maybe it says there's only two available online but once they are sold i just make uh, more sets i'll just show you real quick this is mayday mayday you get that fun huh mayday kind of inspired by the lilacs in my garden that are now they're kind of withering away because it's not uh, may day anymore okay so that was may this is also May. This is Summer Pop. I really love this. A mint, a lilac, and a pinkish, but still kind of muted or soft. Um, this I love because I love anything with mustard. So this is the mustard. No, it's the mint and mustard. A mustard. And this one I call Petals, but it's actually like a lilac with mustard specks. So they look so cute together. I was steady going. He's uh, snoring. He's an old man. He's seven years old, which is a lot in dog years, and he's still acting like he's a pup. This is my uh, favorite color combo at the moment. This is slate, baby elephant walking, and mustard. I call this It's Too Slate. You get the humor. I always think I'm so funny. And I have some, this is Saturday, <clears throat> I have these really bright ones, I call them bright day. <clears throat> yeah, so they're all often something with day, this is green day. <laughs> when I was an exchange student in Tennessee back in the days, green day was just the hottest band ever. Do you remember green day? I remember that I didn't know what dookie meant, that was the first album, dookie, and I didn't know what it meant. And uh, I remember one of them, my friend's dad told me and he just thought it was so funny. Anyway, this is all the three skein minis. I have lots online, so you can go check that out. That was it for yarn. Um, the last thing um, is that I am attending two yarn festivals um, this year. I have already attended one, so actually I'm attending two more this year. Uh, at least that's what I have planned so far. You never know if anything else will come up. But I will be on Fieberfolk in Roskilde. That's in August, I think, uh, August 19th till August 21st. Um, I'm very excited about that. I have only been on these events, um, not festivals, but like knitting events, uh, as a vendor once before. And... That was so much fun to meet everyone and um yeah i really like that so i'm doing that again in august and then in march i think mar no not march in october sorry in october 28th till october 30th i will be in Hoya, uh at the festival meska i masken which is in the most southern part of denmark uh out west uh where some of my ancestors are actually from there and i think i have said that before in my two-year anniversary episode um but yes yeah, so that's two events coming up and 
so I hope I'll see you there. If you are there and you see me, please come say hi. Uh, obviously, of course, I don't always know who you are because uh, I can't see you here on the YouTube channel. But uh, it's just so lovely when you come and say hi. It just makes me so happy. So please do come and say hi. Um, and also I want to say that the advent calendars, I have three versions online. Uh, DK Suck Gold. Uh, glitter sock base and a Kami Janet 8020 Merino sock base. Three versions. And you can decide if you want one full 100 gram skeins uh, to go with that or not. I think with a DK sock, you can only get with a complete full skein of DK sock as well. Um, but what is online is what is online. I will not be making putting extras for sale later. And I think. I will be dying, start to dye the yarn on, on about August 1st. So um, it's not to stress you or anything, but it's just to let you know that with, by August 1st, I will have to close no matter if I still have some available online because I need to start uh, producing and dyeing all the yarn. I have to dye uh, 24 colors of mini skeins. That's going to take a lot of time. And also, of course, the full skeins. And I really want to make sure that i do this in good time because i have orders already now going to uh, new zealand and to the us and i want to be shipping those at the latest by november 1st and i would even actually like to do that in the end of october for them to make sure they actually get there i ordered myself a calendar from chelsea yarns last year and they sent them in really good time and still it took so long for it to get here that i didn't have it until december 8th or 10th or something like that and of course that is not their fault at all it just takes a long time especially after the pandemic but this is to say that i really want to have these done by mid-october so i can ship them out and i know because i have felt the same way that it's just crazy early how can you think about christmas already I'm not, but I really need to be planning this. So it is my first time doing an advent calendar and I just really want to make sure that everyone gets their advent calendar in time so I don't have anyone being mad or disappointed. I really want to do my best with this. So if you want the advent calendar, you should really go and check out if it's something for you. Um, the theme is Danish Christmas. And I really have no idea quite yet exactly uh, the 24 colors that I'm going to dye. Maybe I'll have some days where I just go nuts because I will feel like the need to do something in a color that's really not Christmas related. But maybe I can uh, just call it wrapping paper or something. We will see about that. Um, yeah, so it's really exciting. I'm very excited about it. And uh, so many of you has already uh ordered one so thank you so much for that support that um really means a lot i'm overwhelmed uh with how fast that went um so but there's still uh calendars available so you can go if you want one you can go and order one now and i think that's it i just got a new addiction and i can see that i've been talking for a long time so i'll do it short but i have just discovered something uh let me grab something okay so i follow on instagram a danish knitwear designer uh called shen she um she's a shiny superhero on instagram i will put her name here down below and she i saw her doing a uh, sashiko which is a japanese um embroidery technique from way back and it was used to kind of strengthen kimonos and fabrics um back uh back in the days and when fabric and cotton was of course something everyone could not afford so this was a way of mending clothes and also decorating and i have just started this little and i i think i have the name of this this is the pattern it is called the sashiko sampler and this this pattern is called uh kakinoa i think or maybe that's a company i i actually don't know but you you just kind of buy the fabric and it will have it's hard to tell because i have already embroidered something 
but the pattern you can see it on this it's already on the fabric but when you wash it all this uh blue will disappear so i'm thinking this is a good way to just kind of get into it and then later when i'm a little bit more experienced i will um do my own patterns so i will buy the cotton laid out with my ruler and a Luckily, I have like huge rulers for the patchwork and I will be making my own like graphic uh, patterns. I have bought some pens to write on fabric that will wash off when you put it in the washer. And yeah, so I'm thinking of doing like pillows and all kinds of gorgeous uh, fabrics in the future. But right now I'm just learning. That's why this is almost like a, yeah. You just kind of stitch above the colors as you can see here so and i made my own little i think it's called a thimble so you put this on your hand so when you kind of push the needle through it doesn't hurt your hand and i did this from an old pair of uh, jeans and some old fabric i know it's not that gorgeous at all <laughs> it's not i'm not showing it because it's pretty i'm showing it because i'm proud that i just reused something uh yeah so uh, this is my new hobby and uh when i get a new hobby i never know if this will be a hobby for a weekend or if i will dive in and forget about knitting for the rest of my life there's always uh, some degree of risk that i will lose myself down this rabbit hole of sashiko um I get so inspired by this. I have been watching so many YouTube channels, uh, Japanese channels, explaining me the whole background of this and the story behind it. And I think it's just so fascinating. And the aesthetic is gorgeous. I love, uh, I get so inspired by the Japanese ways of, of the calmness, the perfection, this perfectionism. Yeah, it's like so tidy. And I could really use that in my life. I'm a big of a bit of a mess, so I really love that uh, way of thinking. So, Sashiko, go check that out. I will link down below a YouTube channel uh, with a Japanese woman living in the United States, and she's explaining the story behind it, and she's showing you how to do the Sashiko. And her videos is just it's just like so calm, calm and comforting and I could watch her channel all day but I have watched all her episodes so I hope, hope she will be out with some new um, material soon yes I think I think that's all for now yes so thank you so much for watching uh episode number 49 of the camera podcast if you like what you saw today please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and again i just want to say uh, welcome to all of you who are new and i'm so happy that you wanted to um, stop by and subscribe to this channel that means a lot so thank you so much for that and also all of you who have been here the whole time i will all my loyal uh, viewers, thank you for sticking with me for another episode. And uh, before I go, I just need to thank you all so much for all the wishes, for of good wishes, or what does that call, all my um, congratulations that I got on my two-year anniversary as a YouTuber uh, last Friday. I got so many comments, and um, I was really touched by all the love and all the kind words that you um, gave me. That means more than anything and uh, it gives me motivation to keep doing this so thank you so much for that and i will see you in two weeks from now for episode number oh my goodness is this episode 49 that means that next time it's episode 50 another anniversary okay i will have to think what to do about that we need to do something crazy when uh, we have episode number 50. We will do some lovely giveaways or something. I will see about that. But um, take care, guys, and enjoy June. I hope it's a little bit warmer where you are than here where I am. So take care, and I'll see you in two weeks. Bye.